Stones and Bones folks, it's Hillary, and I am here in the studio, and tonight we are making candy corn wristlets. Okay, checking to see how this is working out. So these are really fun and very easy, super hot in the studio tonight. Um, so bear with me. I'm sure I'm gonna get super sweaty. I got a little fan set up So if you guys have a hard time hearing me, let me know if you can see me if you can hear me And I'd love to know if you sew what you like to sew um, I think I got some fingerprints on there Okay, so while we chat about What we're making here. I am going to scoot over with you guys to the serger. Um, so there are two ways I'm going to show you to make these bags tonight. Um, they're really fun. You're just sewing three strips together and making triangles and sewing a small channel for your ribbon as a closure. Um, and I want to give you guys a couple options because I know that not everyone has a serger, but you still want a really nice finish. Um, so I'm going to talk about French seams tonight and I'm going to show you a bag. I'm going to make one on the serger and I'm going to make one on the regular machine as well. Um, hi, Diane. Nice to see you watching. Um, so French seams is just a fancy finish um, this is what a French seam looks like you're basically encasing the edging by sewing it um, right side out and then flipping it and sewing a little channel sort of like how you do this part um, but it has a really nice look to it so that's what that looks like so for this project you're gonna need three three inch strips so you'll want orange yellow and white for candy corn so when you cut them on your 60 degree angle to make the triangles you're gonna end up with two different designs basically um, one being the red at the top or excuse me orange at the top where is my dear friend elisa i wonder if she's watching elisa are you watching and because you're alternating with the triangles you're gonna end up you see what i'm saying when you cut them so you'll have two different types and it'll be really exciting hi heather how are you doing tonight so if you guys love to sew i'd love to know um if you're not a part of our crafters of the curious and divine group you should join i've got a few really great um, sewing tutorial projects in there for free they're really great pdfs they come with all the pictures lots of information and the bonus is that there are all live videos of me sewing those projects um, last month we did these really cute Pyramid sachets. There's a great tutorial in there for that, uh, for a zipper pouch. Um, and I'm having a brain fart on the other one. But go check out Crafters of the Curious and Divine group. Maybe my best pal and business partner, Elisa, can drop a link to our group in the description. So if you guys are looking for this, you'll find it there, okay? So you're going to get your three three-inch strips. And I'm going to just run these through the serger to show you guys how fun and easy this part is. And what are you doing tonight, Elisa? Yes, just sharing us out. Thank you. If you guys love us, please share us out. It would make me so very happy to reach more like-minded people who enjoy sewing or crafting um, or any of the various things we do. Um, all right, so you can pin this together. So I'm doing right side to right side, and I'm just gonna zip this through the machine. I'm doing a three threads overlock stitch here, and we can talk about, uh, I'll do a little French seam demonstration after this so you know 
what your other options are because I know not all the beginners has a serger but still want that really awesome finished look. Here we go. Oh, thank you, Elisa. So she just dropped the link to our crafters group. So if you want to join, we would love to have you. Um, I love my serger. I don't know if any of you have one. If you have a serger and you love it, let me know. Um, I think they're so fun and fast and really satisfying for projects like this. if you're supposed to do it um, but you have this little switch option for your regular um, your regular stitch and then rolled hem and I like to have a really narrow stitch so I tend to put it on the rolled hem setting even though it's not rolling the stitch it's just it just makes it even more narrow do you guys do that I don't know if there's any surging Folks out there, um, I would love to know. Hi, Daisy. Thanks for tuning in. Um, hi, Diane Jones. Oh, hey. Um, say hi to me in the comments. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, we are making candy corn wristlets tonight. Aren't they cute? And I see there's a couple more people watching now. So we're going to be offering these free with any purchase on our site from now through Halloween. So you get a little bonus bag that you can enjoy yourself or gift out to your favorite kid with some candy. Um, and we might even add something special to it just because we like you guys. So I have my three strips and I'm going to sit them together. And sergers are great if you want to step on the gas. I have a really nice, I'm using a very thin four millimeter stitch three thread overlock. And I'm going to show you guys um, front uh, seams right after this. So there's two of my colors and this will be the inside of the bag with the nice finish. Wow, I see a lot of more folks hopping on. Hey, I'm Hillary from Rootstones and Bones. We're making candy corn wristlets tonight. Um, we have a tutorial for free in our Crafters of the Curious and Divine group. So if you love all things crafting, you love sewing, you're looking for new ideas and new um, projects, I've got a few really great free ones in the files section. Um, and I would, of course, love for you to join and share what you're all about. Hi, Nikki. Nice to see you drop in. So, again, our... our um, we need three three inch strips of your orange, your yellow, and your white. And we are putting them face to face. And I am zipping them through the serger. And after this, I'm gonna show you guys the quick French seams technique that looks really great for finishing if you don't have a serger, because I know all these beginners out there don't have a serger. Um, but you can still make beautiful finishes. Here's an example of what so that'll be a piece, and this is with French seams on the inside. See how nice is that? There's no stitching. You don't have to worry about, you know, putting your hand in the bag. You know, so this is a great technique, not just for what I'm making tonight, but for you guys later. Oh my goodness, I think I gotta put my hair up. It's hot in here. Is everybody like sweltering at home? It's so hot here. I'm in Gill, Mass. I don't know where you guys are. Where are you? Let me know. Is it hot there? Ooh, looking crazy. Okay. So I'm going to zip this through and I'll talk to you guys about how I cut the triangles. After this, I'll show you my board. How I do that. So again, I'm using a three thread 
overlock, a narrow three thread overlock. And I tend not to pin or clip. Um, if you really, um, if you need to for more accuracy, absolutely. Obviously, I'm a little more experienced. I feel okay just going for it. And I urge you to do the same. Have fun with it. So French seams take a little bit longer um, because you are going to sew two pieces together, flip it, and then sew it again. So it's not as immediate as a finish as, say, serging is, but it really does have a nice, clean finish. See, as I, as I go, I keep lining my things up. And I still have my blade engaged. It's nice that it keeps everything clean. You really should be cutting a little bit off as you go. So says the searcher rules. All right, here I go. for the small fan I have right here because I am roasting. Hey Jenny, hi Christine. You go in between the heat and the air conditioner. Lucky you, I do have an air conditioner but it's so loud and I really want you guys to hear me well. Okay, three three inch strips and I surged right down. I didn't need to pin or, or nothing because it's, you know, super fun and and enjoyable to step on the gas and go sometimes. So this is what you will have, and you will be cutting out triangles from this strip, okay? So I'm gonna show you French seams really quick because if you do not have a serger, you're gonna wanna get your three inch strips together still and have a nice finish on the inside that's not gonna unravel on you. Um, so here I come to the other machine. I know we're moving back and forth tonight. Ta-da! I moved really far. Very difficult. Here in Chicopee. Hey, Chicopee. I know Jenny's, Jenny's in Greenfield. Linda. Hi, Linda. How are you doing? Okay. So I had some little example pieces here. So this is obviously not what we're using, um, but I already did some French seams and cut them so I can show you what they look like. To make French seams, simply, all you're doing, you want to have two pieces of fabric and you're gonna have the right sides out. Normally when you do something, they're, they're facing each other to enclose things. That's the next step. So I'm gonna use, and if you're not feeling so comfortable, um, you can leave a large seam allowance and go back and cut closer to your stitching. Um, but I feel very confident um, with doing a, a very small quarter inch stitch here. So that's what I'm gonna do on my machine. I'll just turn this a little bit so you guys can see me. Hi, Karen. Hi, James. How are you guys doing tonight? Are you, do you love to sew? We are making candy corn wristlets tonight. They're very fun and they're very quick. All right, so here we go. This is our second way to finish because I think it's important for all the beginners who do not have a serger. I think it's important for you all to have the ability to still make this project beautiful. Did I miss? I might have missed a little bit. I can't see as well. I don't have my other light on. But both of my machines allow me to step on the gas, and I appreciate that. This one has like a speed setting. Like I can set it to turtle. <laughs> I mean, there's not a picture of a turtle there, but that's like my interpretation of slow stitching. Okay. So step one, step one for a French seam. Stitch with right sides out, so the inners are facing each other, okay? So it, 
it just looks like a little see how it all frays and stuff like that you don't you don't want that obviously that's gonna go inside so this is the magic hi Anna hi Christine how are you guys doing tonight you love the lessons you're getting to yeah this is a little bonus okay because I know not everyone has a surgery but still wants a great finished look and if you if you didn't do this part this is what the inside of your bag would look like and it would eventually fall apart okay so the right sides are facing out and to make French seams you are going to open it up and then fold this beautiful well it's not beautiful it's really ugly that's what we're gonna hide here you're gonna fold that on the inside okay <clears throat> and I just you can press this you know whatever makes you comfortable but I kind of just like to rough it a little bit with my hands to fold it down um, I have these fun little antique roller things for piecing um, that you you know you could use but that is as simple as it is so now since I went down um, the outsides with a um, <clears throat> quarter inch stitch now it's really important to go back with a stitch a little bit wider than that so you encase all the uglies Okay, so that's what we're going to do right now, and then I will show you the finished look that will give. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit bigger, and here we go. All right. And again, you can press this. Oh, I need that fan to turn to me. You can press this so it makes it a little easier for you, but again, I'm just kind of like rolling it in my hands a little bit so I can feel that my seam is where it should be and that the fabric is matching up. So this is just a test piece to show you guys how I did this. I obviously prefer to use my serger because it's so quick and it's an immediate finish. But again, if you are at home and you want great finishes on things, but you don't have, you don't have that, or you know, there are attachments that come with a regular machine you can get that look like it looks like an overcast. If you're very careful, you can go down the side of your straight stitching with a zigzag and that can also give it a very nice finished surged look as well um but that's that's a lot of work and it's it's hard to get it to look really nice um i use this on um, one of our one of our products we have um it's a grocery bag holder i use a french seam on the inside for a finish because it looks really nice and i don't want any of my stitches to be fraying and rubbing up against the bags because you know you really do a lot of pulling on things like that so this is much stronger of a stitch as well all right so here it is your finished French seam for all you beginners again two pieces right sides facing out you stitch a quarter inch down you flip that inside <clears throat> And I stitched, I think that's probably about a half inch now, but you can see that it's a very nice finished look. There's nothing hanging out. All those frayed pieces aren't on the inside. Okay, and ta-da, there's the out, oop, there's some fuzz. There's some fuzz, ta-da, right? Ta-da, that happens sometimes. You can just cut those out. It was fuzzy, but you have a nice finished outside and a nice finished inside and that is what I did for an example right here so you can see the difference between let me grab it here's the inside with surged seams very nice very little very nice looking but the French, and this is the French seams. So this is, I did a bigger one so you could like kind of really get a good look at that. But then you can get, you know, pretty petite on it and, and it hides all of the fuzzy uglies and it looks really nice, right? Okay, so there's your French seam 
little lesson. I hope you like that. If you don't have a serger at home and want to do some nice finishing techniques on, I don't know, other bags or anything really. All right, I'm getting all my stuff mixed up, mixed up. So once you either use your fancy French seam technique or you use your serger like I did on this with your three three inch strips to create that candy corn pattern, you are gonna go over to your cutting mat. That's a great lesson. Oh, I'm so glad you like that, Daisy. It's really much more simple than some books make it out to be. Um, it can be really confusing on paper, so I'm, I'm really glad that you like that. Okay, so now we're gonna cut triangles. I'm just gonna explain to you how I do that here. I grabbed my cutting mat. <clears throat> So I could just show you on your cutting mat, you have really lovely lines that are angles. I'm using a 60 degree angle. So you <clears throat> are gonna line up, you're gonna line this up. I don't know, it's hard for you guys to see. You're gonna line it up and you're gonna line your other piece. Did it the wrong way here. See, I need, I wish I could flip my camera for you guys. This makes it so silly. Okay. So when you line it up, you'll see the lines there. So when you cut, you'll have to flip the other way to line it up and cut. But I'm using just a 60 degree angle, and I want to let you guys know that. And I have to flip as I cut it. I'll show you why right here. So... Here's a nice example. Here's a triangle I cut, right? Now I have to cut the opposite way. So I had to cut the opposite way. I don't know where that opposite way is. Like this, see? So every other, bat, every other cut you're gonna get a set. Okay, so you're gonna have some sets that are orange on the top and then you're gonna have some sets that are white on the top and that's just because of how you how you cut it along that angle so you have to cut and flip and cut and flip okay so once you do that and you pair take your pairs you are going to make the casing piece for your ribbon to go through down here look at my lovely mess of these beautiful things and here's some that I already did up here is one I have not so let's put these aside because I'm making lots for you guys remember these are gonna be free with any purchase through Halloween um, when you go to rootstones and bones Etsy.com okay so to make the casing it's really easy you are going to take the corners and fold them in so this equals an inch and you're going to press and I have my handy dandy pressing mat and iron ready to show you guys okay so let's see if I can get that there all right now if you have one of these hem guides they're really great to use because you can kind of bring it with you anywhere around your studio right okay so just measuring in an inch okay one inch here and I'm gonna press really really easy to make this casing I don't know how I dreamed this bag up but I'm so excited because it's very simple and there you go one inch and I'm gonna press and we're halfway done with the casing so that's the first step okay now you are going to fold up a half inch and press so again you can get to your half inch mark and line it up I just like to give a little check my eyes are pretty good from um, the experience I have 
They make all sorts of amazing hem guides and fancy things you can actually put your iron on now. Okay, so step one, one half inch up. And now you can either use this as a guide for your next half inch flip, or you can measure again. So you're gonna fold this up one more time. Ba -ba -da -ba. I really need a little sound machine that makes fun noises like that. <laughs> I think that would be a good addition to our sit and sews. What do you think, Elisa? That'd be pretty silly. Didn't they used to make those at like Spencer's Gifts? You could get those things and they'd make fart noises and all that stuff. Anyway, I digress. There is your casing. Very simple. So I prefer, where are they? I'll just grab it off this one. I prefer these silly clips because they don't maneuver any of your fabric. You know, if it's something is thicker, you know how when you pin it, sometimes it, it makes a little bulge, it even bends your pin. Gosh, I hate that so much. Why? Got this like bent pin jar over here. What do you guys do with your old needles and pins? Um, I guess I'm a collector, huh? So, there you have it. Now you're going to do that to both pieces for your bag and you're going to just do a nice top stitch along this edge. So I'm gonna do that with you right now. Put this iron aside so I don't burn myself. And that, it's the same for the white at the top. Um, and as you could see with the strips, if you cut your 60 degree angle, you have the white at the top and then you have to flip to cut your 60 degree angle so then you have the orange at the top so every other one is it's going to alternate so you kind of need bigger strips to make some pairs so keep that in mind while we switch this up here get that out of the way hi mary hi Juan. how you doing okay so where is the bag I'm gonna be completing? I grabbed all my stuff and I'm throwing it all over the place, you guys. I promise, I, I promise I'm a little more organized than that. Okay, so let's go with this one. This one's, this one's um, a little smaller because of the French seams because it takes a little more fabric, um, but it's still the same concept. It still has a great finish and we folded our corners in one inch and then over a half inch and a half inch again to make this casing. Now we're just gonna quickly stitch. And I like to do a nice close stitch. So this is probably, stitch forward, stitch back. I'm gonna say I'm using like an eighth inch top stitch. don't have to worry about not hitting your fabric because you have it folded over twice. So this is really, this is a great, great project for beginners um, because you're going to learn so much um, how to make a casing for things, how to cut at angles, um, how to do French seams. And it's really, I know I make it look easy, but I promise you, you can do it, Elisa. Okay, so that's what it looks like when you do a nice top stitch. That's going to be the outside of your bag, okay? So you're going to do that twice. We might as well, let's go for it. We'll make another one. We'll do it again for good measure. I got to press my button again and I keep going backwards. Anyone do that? Step on the gas and you're going the wrong way. Okay. So here comes the fun part. And you can, I've experimented with this, you can do this either with your serger or with French seams. 
Would you guys like to see me do one of each? I can finish the French seam inners with French seams and the other one with the serger might be cool. Hi Ariana, how are you doing? Um, why don't we try it? So again, you have your two pieces that match. Your machine isn't as fancy as yours. It, well, that's okay. You, this is really simple. Um, just we're only using straight stitch we're not using any other stitch hi Heidi nice to see you tonight um, it's just a straight stitch so if you have a straight stitch you can do this well and an iron okay you need an iron well sewing is mostly folding and ironing so hi James French seams please okay we'll do that one first then because that's the one we just did the casing on and here are those lovely finishes so you can finish your bag with the French seams, all right? So again, you're gonna have them with the right sides out. You're gonna match up your sides. So that's the finished side out. And you are not going to sew, obviously, over your casing, okay? You are simply going to do your quarter inch straight stitch all the way down to the corner and all the way to right below the other stitch line. Okay, and I should be smart and give a little pin. You know, make sure your colors line up, make sure your seams are facing the same way, because that can make um, sewing a little bit difficult. And since I'm just sewing on my regular machine, I'm going to use pins. I think the clips. Um, are easier for me with the serger because there is no way it can get under that presser foot, you know? A, a needle can slip past and oh my god, bye bye machine. So I tend to try to use only clips over there for that. Oh, I need a bigger fan. It's so muggy and hot. Um, so again, for any of the new folks watching, you will be able to find this tutorial in our Crafters of the Curious and Divine group where we also have lots of other free tutorials you can download and make and watch. And when I sew, I have videos for all of them that I did live. I don't know, you're saying hi to me. Hi, I, I am well, Ariana. And yes, I was saying hi to you. I like to say hi as folks pop on and I'd love to know if you sew um and and how you're doing tonight if it's hot where you are i'm like sweating profusely up here okay so french seams again there we go right side out i just pinned them you know just a quick pin i know it's a little rough but hey okay so again right below your stitch lines you are going to go in get all those little pieces of fabric out of the way at your quarter inch Doing a nice small outer seam here, back stitching, and we're off. I know I had to make sure that this was a project that you guys could still do on a, on a regular straight stitch machine. Because I know that's super important folks who don't have a serger. If you want to get a serger, I urge you to do so because they are so fun. They're very intimidating, obviously. Um, I remember when I got mine, I probably left it in the box for a week or something because I was like, what if I break it? Um, and I mess up a lot. I was troubleshooting right before I went live tonight on both machines, actually. So that's always interesting, but the, the faster you get at it, you just, you learn so much. Um, did I miss the tip there? I'm not sure what happened. I might have to go back over that. It looks like my machine might've caught it. Yeah, so I've been working with a serger, not for too, too long now, just I think a couple years. And I've got it down to a science. I was so happy I was able to do both of my machines set up. So that's changing the thread and the stitch on my serger in about 
10 minutes tonight. So you can get there too, and I am here to help you guys. Hi, Georgie, how are you tonight? Ariane, you don't sew, and yeah, it's muggy, yeah, ugh. Okay, so did I mess up the little tip here? I'm just gonna go right over that tip again because it looks a little bit funky. Sometimes you just need to hold the ends of your fabric, but this is all going to be hidden with what we are going to create now, French seams. So trim your tip of your project so when you turn it, it's a little bit easier for you to get a nice corner. You're probably going to have a rounded corner no matter what you do. Okay, so this was right side facing out. We did very small seams on the outside and to do the French seams now, we are going to flip it inside out and we are going to stitch a slightly larger seam allowance than we just did so again I did like a quarter inch and now I'm probably gonna do about a half inch see I'm just you can go to your iron and you can press or you can kind of like do what I'm doing and I'm just like maneuvering it a little bit like kind of rubbing out the seam edges Here's our Crafters of the Curious and the Great. Oh, Elisa just posted our link below to our crafters group. We would love to have you and see what you make and what moves you, moves your spirit to craft. Okay, so I just kind of like pressed it nicely with my hands. If you feel like you really want to make sure everything's good, give it a press with your iron, okay? So we are going to encase those raw edges by stitching a little bit larger still in the same space from this stitch line to that stitch line with a slightly larger seam allowance and then we're gonna have to so a lot of these little little things will have to tie off after okay wish me luck no I already started in the wrong spot see I still mess up even though I've been doing this for a long time don't have my big light on here tonight, so because I can't see you guys with it, or you guys can't see me rather. Okay, there I am at the stitch line. And here we go. Oh, I know why. I still have it on back stitch. See, I'm saying you forget those things and you step on the gas, you're going the wrong way. Okay. Third time's a charm, you guys. <laughs> and we're off. My foot pedal's sliding away from me. Sorry, guys. We are almost at the home finish as far as French seams go. Okay, that looks good. I'm pivoting to picking, turn, leaving my needle in, lifting the presser foot and turning at the corner and continuing along this side and it's getting a little wonky under that French seam. So I'm just gonna lift my presser foot and just make sure my teeth are catching it correctly. And we are back. I'm going to back stitch. And hope I did that right. Looks pretty good, guys. So you can see I did about a half inch. And I went all the way around, leaving these here. So that's it. My favorite tool, the chopstick. Hey, Brenda, how are you doing? It's been a while since I've seen you. All right, so I'm going to just push the tip gently, press the edges. Wow, look at that. Nice finish. A little different with the edges 
for the bag, but I think that's something that I'll have to work on for you guys as far as that goes. So that's what it'll look like. It's a little bit smaller. Okay, but the finish is really nice inside. You don't see, well, besides where I have my tails and I need to tie off, you don't see any raw edges. Everything is nice and finished. Okay, so that's for you lovely folks who do not have a serger. And you're going to want to go over and press this so that your casing, casing is sticking out the right, right way. Um, and if you're like me, I like to tie off and hide my, my threads, but it's up to you guys. Okay, so let's finish the other one on the serger, which is super fast, and then we'll run some ribbon through, and that'll be it. Scooch you guys down to the serger. Here we go. Let's see if you guys can see me. Okay, so here's my second bag, and we're finishing this one with the serger. So again, I have my one, two pieces that I cut that match, and I made a half inch casing by folding over an inch on each side, and then a half inch and folding it again. So you have a nice little casing. Um, and it's, it, it's nice, this angle of bag, because it does leave this little lip right here, as you can see. So when I go to serge this, I'm just gonna start right there. Boom, go right down. Hi Janice, hi Catherine, hi Chris, how are you guys tonight? We, I see some more people popping on, so I'll show you again. We're making these really fun little candy corn wristlet bags, and we're going to be giving these away for free with any purchase from our site for the next month, because I love you guys, and these are really fun to make. Um, and I hope that you love them, or you know your kids will love them, or you can gift them out. Um, all those good things. All right, so when I deal with the serger, with this kind of thing, you're probably gonna see me doing a few different adjustments. Um, I generally like to, this one isn't matching up entirely completely, that's okay because the serger will cut and finish any of my imperfections. Another reason to have one if you don't. That's hot. I feel like my screen is even breaking up a little bit. We need a fan on the phone. Okay, so that looks pretty even. And I put pins down the middle here to hold my things in place generally. Um, I don't put pins on the sides to hold together as I'm kind of a klutz and I'll probably run over them. So again, I'm going to make sure they're nice and lined up and I'm going to start, I'm going to start on my machine right here where that little lip sticks out and just go right to the end to the other end. Gosh, it's hot. I hope my phone, my phone looks like it it's glitching a little bit, guys. I apologize. Let's put the put the fan right under here and see if it helps. Okay. Off to the races. There's my tail. So you can, I don't know if anybody's experienced with a serger, but there's a couple different ways of finishing I learned that's really neat. Um, and one is making a stitch and then sliding the tail underneath so the rest of your stitches go right over that. Pretty cool. Um, and then the other is at the end tying a knot and sliding with a needle um, your tail through back through the stitches is the other way to finish which is usually what I do okay here we go guys and again I'm using a nice three thread stitch narrow and right here I'm gonna have to adjust 
adjust because my seam allowance here is pressing down the wrong way and I just like everything to look the way I want it to. Alright, I'm getting to the tip here. And to turn a corner on a serger seems to be doing okay. Okay, good. That's what mom used to do. Slide those tails right in. That's true. Maybe that's where I learned that from and I didn't even know. Um, so I'm going to turn the corner and to turn a corner on a serger, you want to get right to the end and you want to make one stitch after the fabric. Lift your needle, lift your presser foot. You're going to pull them, all of the fabric and the threads off of the little the little pokers in there. Gosh, I should really know my terminology here, huh? And then you're going to slide it back and line it up on the opposite side, making sure that when your needle goes down, and you know, you can do a little test, that it's going to get in right into your fabric. Let's see how I do. Adjustment, and we're set. Come on. It doesn't want to move. I got it stuck somehow. Sorry, guys. You need tweezers if you want to work with a serger. And this is why. Because you really, if you get stuck, you really got to get yourself in there. Okay, let's continue on. Very well. And I do, I do use the tweezers to do an awful lot of manipulating. And I promise you if I wasn't gabbing, we'd be done already. Woo! That's it. So we started, you can see where we started with our tail and where we ended with our other tail. This tail's a little short, so I'm going to have to just knot it and hide it. Um, but we went to the tip, we did a nice turn, it actually came out pretty good even though I got stuck. And that's all for that, how to finish. We are going to get my favorite tool from Chinese food, my handy dandy chopstick. If you don't have one. Um, or some Chinese food. I don't need traditional tools. I, I like my foolish things that work, right? I know that they make specific ones that often come in the bags of stuffing. But. So there you have it. And you can go and press your bag. See, this one's a little larger without the French seams because um, you're folding twice to encase that. So now we're going to put in the ribbon um, and I will just hide that tail for now. And I'll come back over to my regular desk with you guys. Scoot, scoot, scoot. And this is really a great, fun, quick project. So you can use whatever color ribbon you like, but I'm going to go with orange because I can. And you are going to, oh yeah, look at that. There's a big difference. So you might, so I might change the size of the strips for the French seams. Because look at the size difference of the bag. Isn't that crazy? So that's with French seams and that's with the serger. So... Oh, maybe just try four inch strips if you're doing French seams. A little bit bigger if you want a bigger bag. Pardon my sweatiness. I'm here for you guys. Hi, Joanne. Boy, New England. Hi, boy, New England. How you doing? I'm making candy corn wrist bags. So you're going to get your ribbon and you are going to cut enough. I like to do um, a cinch bag. So you're going to cut enough to go 
this way and then again the opposite way. See there's going to be a fold on one side and then you're going to cut another ribbon the same side to thread through the opposite side. So let's go for it I'm using these really hilariously cute embroidery scissors. They're really quite small. And I'm going to move this so it's pointing to me again because I need a little air. And cheers to you all. Cheers, Elisa. I'm sure she's having a nice glass of wine. I haven't had a glass of wine in a month or more, so I figure it's a nice thing to do. All right, so I have two what looks like rather long pieces, but it's because they're going to go opposite ways across your bag. And the best tool that I have found to insert a ribbon of sorts, um, there are a lot of different techniques you can use to figure out how to get them in there. But I really like these foolish utility needles that have a very wide tip they're also bent and they have a huge eye. So, see, goes right in. So to make, to make this, we are gonna go all the way through one side. Do, 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 and you're going right through your casing. Just cinch it up, pull it through. Okay, so we went through one side and there's our end and I am going to go back through the other side. Here we go, and I'm gonna have to do this again with the other piece of ribbon going around the ribbon that's already in there, so that's all right, we're gonna figure it out. And sometimes at the end you have to kind of open it a little bit more. All right, so there's one side. And I, I tend to knot it afterwards. Move that, make sure they're fairly straightened out, not completely flipped around. Okay, so there you go, that's one side. So you have two pieces coming out of one side. And now I am going to go in this side so my ends are hanging out where the loop is and the ends will be out this side and you'll have a loop over here. So again, with my handy dandy utility needle, going in the side that you want your needle facing out, I mean your ribbon facing out, but eat, but eat folks. I know, right? It's probably getting late, but I really wanted to show um, the French seam technique because I just, I think that's so important for folks who don't have a serger, but really want finishing touches um, on a regular machine. So I'm really, oh, I really hope you guys liked that. Okay, so now it's gonna look like you have three pieces coming out of one end, and you're going to have one and a loop at the other, and you're going to go around these pieces. So I'm just gonna go under them and back through the other side. My needle slipped. Technical difficulty. All right, going back. And then we'll tie it, we'll cinch it up, and we'll send it off to one of you beautiful people. This month, if you make a purchase from our website, you are going to have one of these really fun little wristlet bags sent to you as a fun, free gift to excite you for Halloween. There you go. Okay, do you see that? I have two, sorry guys, didn't do my finishing yet. We'll put that away, little tail. So we have two pieces of ribbon on one side and if I were to split them, you would, you'll see the, um, the little swoop from the other side here and that side has it too. So there's a bend. So one piece of ribbon is going in and out this way and the other piece of ribbon is going in and out that way. So now, I don't like to leave too much room at the end because when you pull it, you know, you have a lot more room. So I'll probably leave about an inch. I wanna make sure you can get that through your wrist. So I'm gonna bring it back out and it should be a nice 
easy drawstring in that way. That's why I really like that technique with the ribbons. So I'm just gonna measure on my little chart here an inch and I'm gonna make a knot. So I like to use fray check when I um, cut my ribbon ends. Fray check is this wonderful noxious smelling stuff um, made for ribbons that you put on the ends after you are finished to prevent them from fraying. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. So I'm cutting my ribbon for the ending and, and the fray check stuff. You just take like a little bead and you go whoop along the edge and it keeps it from fraying and it keeps it really nice. So that's one side. Measuring an inch on the other side and then we're done for the night, guys. I would love to know what you think of these bags, if you like them. Um, certainly, if you want to learn how to make these, join our crafters group, Crafters of the Curious and Divine. Alisa has dropped the link below so you can join us. There you go. And there are free sewing tutorials there in the files. There are some amazing crafters in our group, and we could always use more, um, more knowledgeable folks who love to make things, that is your finished bag. Woo! Isn't that fun? I know I still need to tuck my tail. Ignore the tail, ignore the tail. They're so fun and they're fairly easy. So I hope you really like that. Hi, Kathy Lee. So it's got plenty of nice little room. Um, Here's a little thing. Here's one of Elisa's crocheted pumpkins. She has these up on the site right now. Um, they're sets of three and they come with these beautiful smoky quartz. Um, they're actually rather large as you can tell. Um, so there's a little set of them so you can you know, decorate your house and build your crystal collection. So I'm gonna just show you how these little bags fill out by putting some fun things in there and giving it a little bit of weight. So see, they, they close and open so easily. That would be so fun for a kid, for your girlfriend. Uh, send one to your grandma, you know, make a ton of them, enjoy it. And what else can I tell you guys? Oh, we still are having a mask sale at Rootstones and Bones at Etsy.com. Um, all of our masks right now are 25% off. So I hope you treat yourself and protect yourself and your family. We have kids and adult styles. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to keep going with these. I'm having so much fun. So here's one with, the, with some white ribbon. So if you liked this little live sewing tutorial, please share me out if you loved us. Share me to somebody who sews or crafts. I would love to have more folks follow me, give me tips. Um, let me know if they like my projects. Please go try my tutorial. Let me know how it works for you. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for sitting and sewing with me. Good night.